And the first thing you want to do is uh, grab the file. So if you go to my website on OpenDI.com, you'll see here that uh, I have basically iPro tools and utilities. Uh, that's where you would get the admin uh, config tool if you needed it. It also is in the firmware when you do uh, the file that has everything that comes down. So that's under here under firmware assist. So you'll see that under firmware assist you've got uh, individual firmwares if you were knew exactly what it was you wanted to update. If not, you can come in, grab the all firmware, and here you can see that you've got the iPro admin tool if you don't already have that loaded. And then you've got your zipped file of all the firmware updates. So you basically want to save this to your PC, which I've already done. It is a large file. You can see it's 262 meg. Uh, so you may want to load this onto a flash drive before you get out in the field. So now I've got uh, the zip file. It looks like this. I do want to extract the zip file. So I made myself a file called uh, firmware update, and then I extracted all the firmware uh, to that uh, to that file. So I've got all of those updates now in this one file for all of the different products. So what we want to do is fire up the uh, admin tool. If you don't have this, uh, you would need to load that. And the default is admin one two three four five. Uh, for the password on this, and I'm not going to change it, but you'll see here one of your uh, options is to upgrade firmware. So I can do individual firmwares if I know exactly what I want to update, but if I don't want to go through that bother, I can just come in here and now select that file from my website, uh, which is the firmware updates, and it will load that up into this copy. So now I just need to add the range of uh, my devices. So I've got a couple devices on here. I'm going to go from dot one, dot two, and then I'm going to actually add a couple that don't exist to show you that uh, that uh, does not cause a problem. It would just come back and, and basically tell you uh, an error because nothing's there. So I can put my range in. Uh, I've got my password for my cameras, which is lowercase admin, one, two, three, four, five. I hit set, and now you see that range comes across. If I needed to add something that was way out of the range, I could just uh, type that in uh, from that point, and then it would add that individually uh, just by doing that there. And then it would just add that instead of having the range. If I ever need to edit it, maybe I've got the wrong password, I can just click on highlight it and edit it, and then I could change this password to what it is that I wanted. So that's how you would add something that's out of your range. So let's do these cameras right now. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to uh, start this and you'll see here it's basically asking me do you want to do the checkbox devices and I do want to do the checkbox devices. Once I click that it starts that and goes out and basically starts updating these cameras. So there we've got uh, the three NW502's um, it does tell you the previous version. I'm loading in the same version that I had just uh, to show you. But you'll see that the 192.168.1.5 uh, basically came back as an error because that uh, doesn't exist. So now that's going to go out there, and it's basically going to update these cameras. Uh, so just uh, give it some time to uh, go through and update the cameras, and then they'll report back to you uh, that they've been successfully uh, updated. Uh, you can see here that this one came back with a failed to connect, but it already sees these here. So uh, I won't uh, make you sit here and watch this uh, update take place, but basically uh, it's going to send all of those cop the copy out to it. If those were different cameras, it knows exactly what to send to each camera or recorder. So again, just grab the file and send it up as an update. And I hope that's helpful.